Party people, you thought I was gone. I'm not gone. Just took a break for a little bit, but I didn't stop trading. Let's get back into it. Let's talk about Robinhood, ticker symbol H-O-O-D. But if you were in the markets today, there was blood in the streets. Take a look at Finviz. Everything is just deep red. We're talking down at least 1%. Most things down 2 3%. Unless you are a gamer, take a look at this. Activision and EA both had decently green days today, up over 1.36% on EA and 1.67% on Activision. So gamers had a good day. The energy sector also had a good day. This is just the S&P 500. Let's take a look at the world map here. Again, across all sectors, just red, red, red. If we go to the full U.S. stock market, again, red everywhere except for BABA, which is interesting, and also the energy sector. But everywhere, chances are, if you were in the market, if you sold some puts, probably not looking too hot right now. If you sold some puts today like I did, you might be sitting pretty depending on how the rest of the week pans out. This article or this video, I want to talk about Hood. I've been trading Hood for about a few weeks now, making good money, knock on wood. Hopefully that Tendi train continues. Let's get right into it like we always do. Going to show you some news articles. Going to show you some technical analysis. And like we always used to do, going to end the video with some option flow data to see what the big money investors were doing with Robinhood markets today. Let's get into it. So right off the bat, some big news that broke on Robinhood. We can see that they have announced that they're going to slowly roll out crypto wallets. This is something that crypto traders have been asking about for a while now because before, without wallets, you could only essentially speculate on crypto. You could buy Ethereum, you could buy Bitcoin, you could buy Doge, but you didn't really own it. You can only buy and sell it. You couldn't withdraw it from the app and put it into your own wallet or put it into cold storage for safekeeping. So now with the introduction of wallets, Robinhood might be a competitor to Coinbase, BlockFi and other crypto marketplaces. So big boost, big bump when that news came out for Robinhood. But as far as negative news, you guys probably saw this a few days ago that China, I mean, what is this now? The second time, the third time, the 10th time they've banned crypto. Well, they're banning crypto again or banning crypto still, however you want to put it. But that stock did not do well that day. But like most things, I knew there was going to be some overreaction based on the news. So all the crypto tickers like Hood, like Coinbase, went down that day and I sold the dip. I sold some puts on that down news and my puts printed nicely the next day off the rebound. So I love looking for plays like that where there's overreaction. Premiums get juicy once the stock starts selling off really quickly and really hard. That's when I attack, sell some puts, and then go in for the max tendies. Looking at other countries, if you're curious, China is not the only one that has banned crypto right now. So countries like Algeria, Bolivia, China, obviously, Colombia, Egypt, Indonesia, Iran, Iraq, Nepal, North Macedonia. I don't know how many crypto traders there are in North Macedonia, but if you are, leave a comment below. Russia. Turkey, Vietnam. So far, these countries have all banned crypto. This article is pretty recent. Came out, I believe, just a few days ago. Yep, 9-24-21. So they look like they're updating it regularly. So that was some not so great news on Robinhood. But again, I love selling the dip with some puts off some overreaction. And finally, the other kind of bad or negative press that Robinhood is beginning, actually second to last, I should say, is that the SEC chairman Gary Gensler is talking about banning payment for order flow. Again, once that news came out, I want to say about a week or two ago now, the stock dropped pretty decently hard. And again, I attacked, sold some puts on that, which paid out nicely. But I personally don't think that this is ever going to happen. And I say that because payment for order flow, it's not specific to Robinhood. If you look up PFOF or Payment for Order Flow on Investopedia, you'll see that Robinhood is not the only broker that uses it. Big names like TD Ameritrade and Schwab, which just as an aside are going to merge pretty soon or they're in the process of merging, they both use 
PFOF. E-Trade also uses payment for order flow. So I really find it unlikely that all these big players, in addition to Robinhood, that they're going to let the government or the SEC with all their lobbyists and whatever people they have and whatever connections they have, I highly doubt that they're going to allow payment for order flow to just get banned across the board. But again, what do I know? I'm just some random guy on the internet. That's why I think, again, once that news came out, there was going to be overreaction and I sold the dip. So I can hopefully buy to close those options in a few days for some nice gains. So that's kind of where we are right now. The last tidbit of negative news that has come out is kind of this rehashing right now of the whole GameStop saga between Citadel and Robinhood about six months ago now or so. And there's some leaked documents now. So it's kind of drudging up that same feeling, that same negative sentiment against Robinhood. I'll tell you, you know, it is what it is. I'm using Robinhood to make money off of basically by selling puts and collecting premium. So if you're upset that I'm making money off Hood, for what it's worth, I don't have any shares of Robinhood. I'm strictly selling premium. I don't want to get assigned shares. So if I do get tested or if my options do go in the money, I will roll them out because I don't want to own any shares right now, especially with what we saw today in the market overall. Now, let's take a look on Robinhood, the brokerage platform, just to see how the day went today for Hood. And look at this, right off the bat, you know, pre-market, we were down pretty big. We were down almost 2%, down almost a dollar. In pre-market trading, futures across the board were pretty deep red. I think the NASDAQ was down almost 2% already pre-market. And then once the market opened, wow, I thought it was just a fake out. We're going to have a great day. It shot up within the first 20 minutes, up almost 2.5%. And that was just kind of the pump before the dump. Looks like they were trying to probably catch some few people out here by trying to buy shares up high, I guess. And they just dumped this stock really quickly. By just before lunchtime, it was already down almost 4.3%. And then we slowly rallied back all day long. And this was crazy because while the rest of the market was selling off, Robinhood was slowly crawling back. And it even went green in power hour, which I thought was absolutely amazing. In fact, somewhere right before power hour, I put out a message in our Discord server. Quick shout out, if you're not in there already, make sure you sign up. And I said, is this thing really gonna go green right now while the rest of the market keeps bleeding off? And sure enough, it did, but then it sold off. We ended up closing the day down, but down only 0.3%, which honestly is not bad considering all the deep red that I showed you on Finviz at the beginning of the video. Looks like in post-market trading, we were pretty much flat. Yeah, we're down a little bit more now, now down 0.4%. I mean, we really lost about what, 30, 40 cents today, which is not bad in a day like today. I will gladly take it. The NASDAQ was down what, almost 3% and Robinhood is in the NASDAQ. So it actually did better than the overall group, if you want to call it that, of stocks it's in. So totally a win, especially for me who has puts open right now. This was a great theta day because actually today, not only I played this to toot my own horn here fairly well because I was able to cash out or buy to close some puts I'd open right during this peak in the morning because you know what? I saw what the market was doing pre-market. I kind of figured this was kind of a fake pump and dump. So I wanted to get out as quickly as possible with some nice gains. So I closed down my positions and then actually not during this initial drop, but the second drop right around lunchtime, I was able to sell some more puts because I saw the RSI was very oversold. There was a lot of negative momentum that looked like it was trying to turn around, which is exactly what it did. So I sold some puts on this second kind of valley here. And man, my puts have printed already on one of my puts, I'm up almost 50% on the day. And on the other one, I'm up, I believe, 30%, if I'm not mistaken. So in one day, those are some really nice gains. I'm hoping we have a either flat or green day in the market overall tomorrow. Because can we really have two huge red days, like another minus 2, minus 3% day in the market? I hope not. Because if that is the case, or if it's just a theta day, I'm hoping to just squeeze a little bit more premium out of my puts and then sell them for a profit tomorrow. But stay tuned. We'll see what happens. Again, 
If you want just kind of up to the minute chatter about the market, we have a great Discord server going on, so make sure you click the link below. But that's where I am right now with Hood. Let's take a look at some TA to see what my thoughts are. So here on TradingView, you know this is where I like to do my TA. Some basic TA, I just like to keep it simple these days, just support and resistance lines, some moving averages. So right now this orange line here is the 21 day moving average. Robinhood hasn't been trading that long, so there is no 50 day moving average as of yet. I've drawn some support and resistance lines you can see here in this light yellow color. And right now, you know, I have puts at the $41 strike that expire this Friday. And I have some 40 strike puts that I opened earlier today that expired next Friday because I was playing that valley, playing that dip. And initially this morning, I had puts that I bought to close that were at the $43 strike. And I was a little nervous because the reason I chose the 43 strike was because that's right where this 21 day moving average was. I figured if there was a sell off that this would be an area of support. And I was somewhat right. I actually had this other area of resistance at around the mid $42, like $42.50 or so, because we can see some candles and some wicks about a week or two ago topped out over there. And then back in end of August, kind of looked like a little bit of an area of support. So I thought we would have that as an area of support as well. And take a look today, if I zoom in here, take a look, this candle, the wick blew through the 21 day moving average. It's right when I started to get a little bit nervous and it stopped right here at this second area of support. So pretty happy with that. And as we know, it ended up closing way above that. So looks like that 43 level held so far right now. I'm looking, like I said, to squeeze a little bit more premium out of that before I close them out. But I did have some healthy gains today. Getting a little bit greedy, I know. But let's see what tomorrow has in store and we'll see if this 43 kind of mid 42 level holds or if it breaks. I'm kind of curious to see what Robinhood does because I was nervous. Every time it has a big green candle, it kind of slowly sells off the next few days. And we had a big green candle here on the 22nd. And we kind of had that sell off again. So that's why I wanted to play it a little bit extra safe with these new options I opened today with a strike around 40, which puts it at around this lower area of support where kind of the bases of these candles are from a few weeks ago. That's why I chose the $40 strike. So we'll see what happens and hopefully I'll check back in with you and made some profit. Let us end the video looking at the option flow data to see what some of the big money players were doing with Robinhood today. So here's Sweepcast. This is one of the option flow programs that I use. And you can see there were five sweeps that came in today. Four of them were calls, one was a put. And actually the overall sentiment was bearish for four of them and one was bullish. However, if you take a look at the strike prices, so the weird thing is, is that these calls, even though this is bearish, they were out of the money calls. I mean, they're 45, 46, and 60 strike calls that actually expire. One is in three days, another is in 17 days, and one is a long dated option for 52 days monthly. So I'm not sure why this is necessarily bearish. It looks like these are playing the upside here. This put was actually also a 39 strike put. So this could also be considered bullish if it was sold, but typically we assume these are bought. So that would be a bearish play at a $39 strike that expires in 17 days. And lastly, we have this 45 strike call, which again expires in three days, which is bullish. So we'll have to wait and see how this pans out. In general, I haven't found, or maybe I'm not using it appropriately, I haven't found this option flow data that helpful because I'm not at my computer 24 seven just stalking this thing to see what the latest tick that comes in is. I just use it for fun basically, just to see what kind of the big money is doing. You know, if I see a lot of calls come in or a lot of puts come in, well, it kind of gives me an overall sentiment of what I think the stock might do, but that's all it for today. Let me know if you're an OG in the comments below. And for sticking around to the end of the video, I'll tell you what, I will reduce the price of our monthly Discord server. If you add the Discord server and just DM me, more than happy to send you a reduced monthly rate. As always, make sure you add me on Twitter, StockTwits, Instagram, and Reddit. Hope you had a great trading day. Hopefully tomorrow's an even better trading day. And as always, I'll see you on the moon.